Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. What a time to be alive. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand to be mandatory. But there will be no nationwide mandate. I was referring to mandates by private institutions and portions of the federal government. There will be no federal mandate. One that's not the role of the federal government. I don't think you'll ever see a mandating of vaccine, particularly for the general public. But you would never mandate, at least I do not think you would. Uh, I'd be pretty uh, surprised if you mandated it for any element of the general. So, so here's the thing. We, are, we cannot require someone to be vaccinated. That's just not what we can do. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. When people are able to design their lives in a way that they can determine their own futures, we are a stronger democracy and we are a stronger nation. When people are able to make choices without government interference for themselves in terms of their well-being and the well-being of their family in consultation with whomever they may choose, we are a stronger society. The bottom line, we're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. We're going to reduce the spread of COVID-19 by increasing the share of the workforce that is vaccinated in businesses all across America. My plan will extend the vaccination requirements that I previously issued in the healthcare field. But it's a requirement for people at a business with more than 100 people, and it's not a requirement for migrants at the southern border. Why? That's correct. Go ahead. As far as I know, to um, to to uh, to board a plane, and so saying that if you want to stay unvaccinated, that's your choice. But if you want to travel, you better go get that vaccine. I would support that if you want to get on a plane and travel with other people that you should be vaccinated. First of all, in an infectious disease outbreak, getting vaccinated is not a personal choice. It's not, it's something that we do for the community. In an infectious disease outbreak, your personal choice ends where my right not to get killed by an infectious disease begins. So we have these collective actions for the good of the community, not the individual. We've been patient. But our patience is wearing thin, and your refusal has cost all of us. And you now lose your basic, fundamental human freedoms because he doesn't like the decision that you made. I, I, I will say this. If you believe that, that your basic liberties are predicated on the consumption of a product from a giant pharmaceutical company, you are a fascist. Since, since I don't know what fascism is, can you tell me how Mussolini defined it? He defined it as a merger between corporation and state. These are not businesses deciding that they don't want customers in. This is the government it telling businesses that they have no choice. Yeah. This is discrimination under the law. And it's yes. interesting that these so-called progressives don't care that this is going to disproportionately affect minorities and immigrants. Oh, all of a sudden, that's not an issue, right? Having to show ID for voting, that's fascism, right? <laughs> but this isn't a problem. Uh -huh. Like many of you at the end of last week, uh, I watched the press president's address um, about vaccine mandates and increasing vaccine mandates. And he's going to ask the Department of Labor to make up a rule. That just means a law. He's going to legislate through the executive branch. I, I was going to go back to the whiteboard, right, and get the whiteboard out again, like I did with the CDC mandate. And I was going to explain how the executive branch can't make laws because that's the job of the legislative branch. Um, and that, that's not what he's doing is illegal which is a, a, a very core issue and a very big problem. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought there's, there's an underlying issue, even under the legality of it, that really is the main problem here, the main driver. And that problem breaks down to this. Uh, what they are doing, they in this case being Joe Biden and all the other people that are pushing vaccine mandates, is they are breaking society down into two classes of people, right? The vaccinated, who are the proper, healthy, right people who are morally upright and care about other people, and the unvaccinated, who are selfish, dirty, evil people who can kill you just by being around you. And that's what's going on. And the history is replete with examples 
of breaking down people into two groups like that. And then the next decision comes, what do you do with the dirty people? And that, of course, in case you've you know, never read a history book ever or haven't even the faintest idea of how humans work, is where all atrocities are born out of. All of the great atrocities in history come from classifying people into different groups where one is just inherently superior, upright, moral, righteous, good, holy, whatever word you want to use, and the other is inherently dirty, dangerous, evil, selfish, whatever. Uh, and, and so when you do that and, and you start to say, oh, well, if these people really are that way, then we should treat them like that. That's where atrocities come in. Obviously, the most recent example of that would be uh, the Nazis and what they did to the Jews. Uh, and again, classifying a people as inherently dangerous just by being. That is the problem here. What they are doing is they are classifying a people that are dangerous by their mere existence. By the mere fact that unvaccinated people exist, they are a danger to everyone. Just by being around them, you can die. Now, of course, you could ask logical thinking questions like, uh, well, if I'm vaccinated and someone isn't vaccinated, doesn't the vaccine protect me? You could start doing that. But of course, thinking and reason don't really apply when it comes to hate and degradation. And that really is what the driving factor is. Don't be confused here. This is not about health or reason or logic or science or law. None of that has any bearing in what's going on here. None of that has any kind of weight or value. The main driving factor is how can we turn this dirty group of people and get society and collude with propaganda out of the media against them in order to punish them for not doing what we want. That's what it boils down to. Uh, and when you have a scapegoat, you have someone to blame all the problems on, like Nero did with the Christians in Rome, like Hitler did with the Jews, like the Young Turks did with the Armenian Genocide. Well, we, again, history is replete with these examples. When you do that and you can blame a person for all of your problems, well, then, then you have a convenient way to, to mass popular support. You also have a convenient way to make your problems go away. You can tell this in the language that they're starting to use more and more, right? This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. So again, what they're doing is they're saying this group of people here is inherently dangerous and dirty. We need to deal with them. And that's where you're going to see increasing calls for violence. You're going to see increasing calls for imprisonment. You're going to see increasing calls for going door to door. You're going to see increasing calls for being violent because enough is enough. And these people are dangerous and we have to do something. You're, you're going to watch. You're going to watch that progress into this violent move towards people who aren't vaccinated. Right now, they're turning all the screws they can with legality, and I use that loosely because again, what they're doing is illegal, but they're, they're trying to turn the screws in the financial sector, they're trying to turn the screws in that you can't get a job, Pretty soon they're gonna start trying to bar you from going to places, right? Like grocery stores or you can't open a bank account or something like that. And then again, it's gonna culminate in violence because that's where this goes. All you have to do is look at examples and you know that this always ends with violence towards the untermensch, right? Towards the underman, the subhuman, uh, which is a word that the Nazis invented. And when you start classifying people as subhuman, it is only a matter of time until you treat them as subhuman. And that really, to me, is the main driving danger in this whole thing. The fact that they're full of hypocrisy is ridiculous, right? As the clips in the beginning of this showed. The fact that it's illegal, of course, is an outrage. I mean, all of these things by themselves are off the charts insane. However, we need to start looking at the cold, hard reality of where things like this go. And that is genocide and atrocities. That's where this ends. You can call me crazy, but you would have called me crazy eight months ago, and now look where we are. So, if you're a student in history, and you know where this ends, I encourage you to think about that and prepare accordingly. Do brave deeds and endure.